Hey everybody, I've got kind of a short video for you here today. If you happen to be in the market for a portable SSD to use with a camera or a HyperDeck recorder or an ATEM switcher, I've got some recommendations for you and some tips that uh, will make your buying decisions a little bit better. And I want to make one specific call out on a, a product I see used all the time, which actually doesn't really work in this particular situation. So with that, let's actually just dive right in. Hey everybody, I see discussed online quite a bit, whether it be Facebook, Discord, or other online forums, various places, uh, email, whatever. Uh, people talking about what the various models of SSDs that they use in order to uh, record footage off of a camera or a HyperDeck or ATEM switcher. And there seems to be some inconsistency on what products work well and which ones don't. But I'm going to start right off and say that I see one mistake being made more often than not, and that is people using the Samsung T7 drive for that particular uh, type of situation for that as a solution for recording video. And I see the same thing coming up over and over and over again. Lost footage, drop frames, aborting recording, uh, you name it, like just general instability with this particular drive with a lot of these recorders. And that, that's been my, my experience as well. The Samsung T7 is incredibly popular, but it's not well suited to this particular task. So while it might work well with a computer, it's not going to work well with video recorders. And there are some specific reasons for that. And I'll get into talking about that a little bit here in this video. But at the same time, I'm actually going to make some recommendations, a couple of recommendations on some products you may not be familiar with, which actually do a much better job and actually cost less. So uh, let's take a look at the drives that I actually have here in front of me. These aren't the only ones that I've evaluated, but they're the ones that I thought would probably be most interesting to the viewers here on my channel. So in the middle here, I've got that Samsung T7. This is the one terabyte version of that drive. Uh, I've done thorough testing on this and all the other ones, and I have some graphs to indicate why this one actually fails in uh, video recording. Next to it we have a SanDisk Extreme Pro. That's another one I see mentioned quite a lot. This one is certainly better than the Samsung and I know a lot of people do have success with this drive and, and that, that includes me. I've, I've had uh, these actually work for me fairly well but at the same time after I've done some benchmarking on this one this is probably not necessarily the best choice either. Moving over here I'll take a look at a couple other drives from Crucial. This is the Crucial X8. This is actually designed to compete with these particular models here, the T7 and the Sandus Extreme Pro. It's kind of in that same price ballpark. Uh, and this one does work better than those, uh, but it's not necessarily the best value. And, and that's where the Crucial X6 comes into play. And I'm gonna show you some performance graphs on all of these drives. And you, you can certainly make buying decisions of, of your own, but for my money, I'm gonna be investing in the Crucial X6 drives for most of the video projects that I happen to work on. It's not only the cheapest, but it's uh, got very consistent performance, which makes it work really well for video production. And then on the opposite side here, I've got kind of a build your own. This is a, a Sabrent enclosure with uh, whatever SSD, NVMe SSD you want to happen to pop in there. This one right here actually has a Samsung, Samsung 970 Evo drive in it, but you can put in whatever drive is going to have the performance and capacity that you need for your particular needs. Uh, I use these enclosures all the time, and I will be making a specific recommendation on a drive that you can put in there that gives you a lot of performance, very consistent performance, and is quite affordable. So uh, let's actually take a look at some of the performance on some of these drives and why some work better than others. So if you haven't seen this before, this is a feature I have on my website where I catalog performance of all the different media that I happen to use, and I... I do accept submissions from other users. I created a piece of software called DJ Drive Tool a number of years ago, and it's designed to recover data off of a failing drive. But a side effect of doing that is actually benchmarking the drives. And so it actually will generate some pretty cool uh, st statistics about the performance of the drive and create some graphs about how the drive performs over the entire span of the storage that's available. So with that said, uh, we can go over and take a look at the Samsung T7, and, you, and you'll be able to see fairly easily why this drive is not necessarily great for video work. So let me take a look at this chart right here. So these are performance numbers for both read and write speeds. We've got your max, an average, standard deviation, minimum, and then these numbers here indicate uh, performance over the course of the entire volume. And these numbers 
right here, for example, the 5% number is actually probably the most meaningful of all the numbers that are here on this chart, which is basically saying that 95% of the time, this drive is going to perform at this rate or faster. And that's really what you need to pay attention to when you're buying a drive for use with uh, recording video. Uh, video can be very demanding because it just comes in nonstop. It's a consistent stream and never slows down. And unless a drive is specifically designed to handle that, it's probably going to fail. Now, if we take a look at the chart here, we can see that happening. So the blue line up top here is read performance, and that seems to be pretty consistent across the entire drive. But we take a look at the red numbers here. Those are your write performance uh, data. And it's pretty clear from this that it's kind of all over the map. And that's why these drives actually fail, because you just can't predict how, how fast the drive is going to be. And as, you, as we're testing it, you can see at the very beginning it's pretty fast, but it drops before too long, and that's when we start to have issues with video failing. So either frames being dropped or outright just stopping in the middle of a recording. So uh, because of that, the, the T7 is really not a great drive for use with recording video. And unfortunately, I see people using these all the time, and I see people complaining about them all the time. Ironically, the older T5, which has been discontinued for quite a while, is actually better for recording video than the T7. And that's probably why people like the, or have tried the T7, because the T5 actually did work reasonably well for that. You would think a newer up upgraded drive would be better. Turns out it's not, and most people who use the T7 have found that they just don't work consistently for video work. All right, let's take a look at the next one here. This is one that I don't have on my desk here, but it's a SanDisk Extreme Portable. This is the non-pro version of this particular drive. And we can see here that the performance numbers on this one are actually worse than the T7. So this is a drive that's sort of meant to compete in that same, that same portion of the market. But look at our 5% number, and it's 359 megabytes per second, which you would think it would be enough, but it's actually not when it comes time to go to write uh, video data to the drive consistently over the course of minutes uh, or out even hours. So I, I know that people who have tried this drive and have had very limited success, if not outright failures uh, with it. And so this would not be a drive that I would recommend for using with video production. Well, let's go to the pro version of that, which is one of the ones that I do have here on the desk. You can see here that it starts out going really fast. You know, we've got numbers close to uh, a, a gigabyte per second, but it drops off after, in this particular drive, the two terabyte version, the performance drops off after half of a terabyte, which means that the drive has a buffer and it's filling up and it's no longer able to maintain those high speeds. So this is one of those drives that it can work, but generally speaking, only for shorter recordings. If you start to use it for, for longer runs, you prob probably will find that you start to have frames dropped and or recordings aborted prematurely. So. Not necessarily a drive that I would recommend personally. I, I don't know that some people have, have had luck with these, but based on these numbers that I'm seeing here, the performance of this drive is not something that I would necessarily recommend myself. All right, let's move over to the Crucial X8. This is, again, a drive that's sort of priced to compete with the Extreme, po Extreme Pro and the T7. Uh, it's priced in that same ballpark. Uh, I know this, this chart's a little bit hard to read, but you can see that the performance is actually pretty consistent all the way from beginning to end. And so this is a drive that I would absolutely 100% trust for recording video. And it's actually, ironically, less expensive than the T7 and the SanDisk Extreme Pro. Uh, and yeah, it, it's, it's just a great value all around. So in this case, the 5% number is 813. That means over the course of the entire drive, 95% of the time it was writing at 813 megabytes per second or faster. And so this drive would absolutely be able to keep up with the demands of recording video. All right, now we'll take a look at the one that I actually want to recommend this uh, course of this video, and that's the Crucial X6. So even though this is meant to be a lower end drive than the X8 that we just looked at, its performance numbers are actually really close. And so we come here to our 5% number for writes, 739.4 megabytes per second. That is easily enough to handle any of the video loads that we kind of encounter with people who watch this channel. So if you're recording video off of a camera, whether that be compressed or raw or whatever, or recording off of an ATAM or any other sort of device which is gonna be generating video, like a HyperDeck, this Crucial X6 
seems to be up to the task. It's actually quite a bit faster than the more expensive options and uh, it's actually the least expensive uh, version of the bunch. So in this case, this drive is currently selling for $59 for a one terabyte version. And again, it's able to write continuously for 730 plus megabytes per second over the course of the entire disk. Therefore, it's gonna be a great choice for recording video. All right, so uh, with that said, you can also assemble your, arm, your own and uh, I'll have links to uh, this particular enclosure popping up here. But this is, again, the Sabrent enclosure. This runs about $30. It's really easy to, to work with this. In order to pop the drive in, you just basically turn that lever, put the drive in, lay it down, and then rotate the lever back over, and then close it up, and you're good to go. So super easy to configure, and it makes it really easy to swap the drive out if you ever want to upgrade it, or you want to have a series of, of drives that you swap in and out of there on demand. Uh, so uh, this makes it really easy to do that. Now my favorite uh, NVMe SSD for this particular enclosure is currently the Samsung 980 Pro series. Those used to be really expensive. They were kind of a premium device and their performance is still absolutely amazing. These are uh, drives that are capable of writing five gigabytes per second pretty consistently. Uh, with the prices in memory dropping in the last few months, this drive has become extremely affordable. Uh, I would recommend just going straight to the two terabyte version. Uh, it's regularly priced at about $125 right now. I've seen it go as low as 99, but you, it's typically kind of in that 125 range right now. You had the $30 enclosure on there and you've got a two terabyte drive. It's gonna blow the doors off the performance of all the rest of these things. And it's gonna do so at a price that's less than uh, some of these other models. So if you're adventurous enough to try and create your own drive, then that would be a fantastic way to go. So anyway, that's going to about do it for this video. So if you have other drives that you recommend that you've used that actually work really well, I'd love to hear about that in the comment section down below. Or if you've got questions about these or anything else related to video production, you can ask those in the comments as well. Or even better, join us over on my Discord server, djp.ly slash Discord, and you can ask your questions there to a huge community of people who work in video production professionally and are very eager to answer questions and help out where they can. So again, that's going to do it for, for today. So thanks everybody for watching and have a fantastic day.